Okay, stop right there, man. It's late night. You're surfing the channels. I know just what you're looking for. Drugs, sex, and violence. Well, you've come to the right place because it's dope pushers and vice dolls night all night on USA's Real Wild Cinema. Welcome. Tonight we've got probably the most politically incorrect show you're going to find on basic cable. It's Dope Pushers and Vice Dolls Night here on Real Wild Cinema. I'm your hostess, Sandra Bernhard. And as always, we've shortened our little film so you can still watch our show and go out later and get into a bar fight. Let's get to it. Our first flick tonight was originally released simply as female, with the tagline, Untamed Thrill Girls of the Highway. It was later changed to the violent years. No word on what happened to the clever tagline. It was written by the brilliant Mr. Ed Wood in 1956. This film was so chock full of sex and violence and other bad behavior that it could only play in drive-ins or on the exploitation circuit. Enjoy the violent years where a bunch of hard-ass girls hold up filling stations, molest men in the park, and vandalize their high school. Then what else? celebrate by throwing a wild pajama party. Gee, I hope I didn't just give away too much of the plot. Audiences in the 50s love this film, and of course, you will too. Enjoy. This is a story of violence. A violence born of the uncontrolled passions of adolescent youth and nurtured by this generation of parents those who in their own smug little world of selfish interests and confused ideas of parental supervision refuse to believe today's glaring headlines. But it has happened. Only the people and places have been given other names. Characters ought to learn to carry more dough. You can stand up now. Well, maybe he's got more to offer than his money. What are you getting at? Big, strong, a little pretty maybe, but 
Yeah, under conventional circumstances, he could be very interesting. Why wait for conventional circumstances? You got a point there. What about her? Oh, tie her up and toss in the back of the heap. Tie her up? You heard me. Sure, I heard you. But maybe you'd like to tell me what I used to tie her up with. Use her skirt. That looks strong enough. Tear up and use it. You heard her, girl. Get a move on. Now back to you, Hen. Look, you have my money. You have my watch. You have my ring. What more do you want? Toss in the back of the seat. Okay, but do you mind telling me where we're going? Someplace where it's safe. Just follow us. Moving along, if those bad girls in the 50s didn't get you with a gun, there was always another way. We'll be back with the horrors of VD and damaged goods. But first, a few tips on how to pick the proper girl to ask out on a date. How do you choose a date? Whose company would you enjoy? Well, one thing you can consider is look. Woody thought of Janice how good-looking she was. He'd really have to rate to date somebody like her. Yes, he'd enjoy that. Except, well, it's too bad Janice always acts so superior and bored. She'd make a fellow feel awkward and inferior. Well, perhaps someone who doesn't feel superior. There's Betty. And yet, it just doesn't seem as if she'd be much fun. What about Anne? She knows how to have a good time, and how to make the fellow with her relax, have fun too. Yes, that's what a boy likes. He wants to know he's appreciated. Anne would be fun on a date. We'll be back with more Real Wild Cinema after this. The first film version of our next flick, Damaged Goods, was produced in 1916. There was a long-running stage production as well. Yeah, I'm sure it played off Broadway. This particular movie is a remake of a property that had been educating folks about syphilis ever since before World War I. The film starts out with these four really cute guys who can't decide what to do. So they go down to Seaview to visit the strip clubs. Can't you just hear these boys' mothers now? Don't you have anything better to do with your time? What's cooking? No, oh, we're going cruising. You want to come? Where to? I don't know. Malibu, maybe. Oh, not again. Hey, I have a great idea. Yeah, I'll bet. Couldn't be any worse than Malibu. Well, go ahead, spill it. Let's go to Sea View. Hey, not bad. Cool. We'll follow you, Jim. Thanks a lot, buddy. 
<laughs> Don't mention it. Gives me the creeps. Oh, I have a brew, you'll feel better. I don't think that'll do it. Want a coolie cup? What's a coolie cup? That's a rum drink. Yeah, four coolie cups. Come on, let's get out of this dump. I second it. Oh, come on, just one more drink and we'll go. Just try it. Thanks. Oh, man, they ought to be good. Company. No thanks. Want another drink? Don't you like me? Of course I like you. You're very handsome. Thank you. never had a girl before. Sure I have. I could make you happy. About a week ago, I noticed this small sore. You suppose I could have picked up something from Moana? Oh, you really are in a sweat. You break training, get a pimple, and panic. Yeah, I guess you're right. Listen, I'm gonna cut out when Kathy gets back. If she wants to stay, will you take her home? Notch. Are you worried about something? I guess so. Are you having trouble with your studies? Oh, no, sir. Can't be girl trouble. No, sir. Then what is it? Maybe nothing. Like to tell me about it? 
Well, I gotta talk to somebody. Shoot? We went down to Seaview several weeks ago, you know, a gang. And we had a few beers and we caught a show. And then on the way home, we stopped at this little bar. And it turned out to be more than a bar. And we had a few drinks and made us feel big. So you think maybe you picked up something, huh? I don't know. Any symptoms? Yeah, I have this little sore. It won't heal. Jim, it could be nothing. But we better not take a chance. I know a doctor over at the clinic. Suppose we take you over there and let him have a look at you, huh? You have syphilis, Jim. I couldn't. I'm sorry. Do you know where you contracted it? I'm not sure. Be honest, Jim. You don't get syphilis from spoons, dirty glasses, or toilet seats. I guess I got it at Seaview from a prostitute. I see. Have you had intercourse with any other girl since then? No, sir. You're sure? Yes, sir. It's important, Jim. Our biggest problem in controlling venereal disease is breaking the chain. If we can contact the people who've been exposed to it, well, we can keep it from spreading. Otherwise, there's no telling how many people will become infected. Well, there was nobody else. Well, if you'd lived 100 years ago, I wouldn't have been able to help you. Even as short a time as 20 years ago, the cure would have been prolonged and painful. But now, thanks to modern medicine and the fact that we caught your case early, we'll be able to lick it before it does any real damage. Personally, I never want to hear a doctor tell me he can lick my syphilis, no matter how soon he detects it. And it's always good to be reminded of the fact that you can't catch syphilis from spoons, dirty glasses, or toilets. Thanks. That really narrows down the margin, doesn't it? When we come back, I'll have a conversation with tonight's special guest and more bad dudes and bad chicks in our feature presentation of Teenage Gang Debs. My guest tonight has starred in Hollywood classics like West Side Story and How the West Was Won. But he's also worked the other side of the cinematic street in low-budget gems like Satan's Sadists. Russ Tamblin. <laughs> Hi, Russ. Hi, Sandra. Wow. I didn't realize you were in all those like, cool films. <clears throat> yeah, I did a bunch of them. Well, how does tonight's feature Teenage Gang Debs compare to West Side Story? <laughs> Since they're sort of the same idea. Well, it's a little hard comparing them. It's kind of like caviar caviar and potato chips you know or <laughs> rolls royce and roller skates which both have their you know <laughs> yeah but actually um you know i can see where this film was definitely uh teenage debs was inspired by uh west side story uh i'm surprised they didn't snap in it i mean <laughs> they could have done that you know they didn't have to I do i think they the edited dancing. out the snapping ah no wonder Silent. Too, too much uh, practicing. Hmm? So since you've worked both sides of the situation, the, the big budgets and, and the low budget, what, what's the difference between working in the mainstream Hollywood and, and the low budget world? Um, the, the low budget films are, uh, are more fun. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. I mean, they pay less, uh, but, uh, and, and you work for a shorter amount of time, but um, they're, they're more fun. You, can do, you, you don't have as much pressure on you. Uh, uh, you don't have to worry about it coming out. You usually look forward to just to uh, to the preview of it, running it with all the people. And usually, it's a lot more. There's a lot more love that goes into it. A lot of people that work on B films uh, do it for nothing. Literally, work for nothing, and you won't find anybody working on major films no, that's for nothing. That's for damn sure. You gonna hang out for a little bit while we watch our feature? Oh yeah, we'll absolutely. Come back and talk some more. That's that's my that's what I do. That's it's what you do of... best, Russ. Just <laughs> hang. Imagine West Side Story without the songs, dances, talented actors, a good director, or a script that makes any sense. Okay, now cut your expectations in half and you've got tonight's feature movie, Teenage Gang Debs. Filmed in 1966 on the grimy streets of Brooklyn, Teenage Gang Debs is a violent and sleazy story of gang warfare and unbridled ambition. The director, Sandy N. Johnson, is a true artist who never cares whether the camera quite catches the action and who fully appreciates the wild energy of the first take, no matter how inadequate. Now, if anyone involved with this movie made any other movies, I'm unaware of them. Enjoy part one of Teenage Gang Debs. <laughs> Thank you. 
to move in on Rebel Turf? Yeah, I'd like to make it as a deb. What the hell did you bring that pig in here for? I wanted to. Do you mind? I mind like hell. You trying to tell me what I should do? I'm still your deb, and I've got the scars to prove it. You used to be. You used to be, and I'll beat it. You used to? You two-timing me for this pig face square? Yeah. Oh. That's not fair. It's between the pig and me. That's right, Johnny. It's between the two of them. I know. You don't have to tell me. It okay by you? It's okay by me. Get out of here. Pack up and move. Just like that? Yeah, just like that. We're finished now. Get moving. See this room, baby? For the present rebels. There's nobody but me can come in here. Think this stuff? We got this from other games. You know, I took a lot of it myself. See? Take off your sweater. J.G. They're my initials, baby. It's kind of a requirement I got. Anybody makes it with me, he's got to wear my initials. You're my bro now. How do you mark? Cigarettes are a knife. You want to light a cigarette, that hurts a longer time. The knife is quicker. But you might get infected. Nuts to you, Buster. Nobody's gonna cut me up. guys with the eagles. There's gonna be a rumble tonight. I can feel it. Don't make me mad, boy. Don't make me angry. I'll bust you in two, boy. If it tickles my fancy, I can be mean, boy. So don't get me riled up. Don't make me angry. Don't make me mad. Please don't make me mad. Don't make me mad. Listen, Nino. He wants to cut his initials into me. So? He does that to all his debs. Well, this is one deb that don't go for that kind of crud. Nobody's gonna mark me up, you hear? Okay, okay, I get it. And you want me, huh? You got the heart, Nino? Or you're chicken to stand with Johnny? I ain't chicken. 
Come on with me. I'll show you. Let's check it. Who the hell's in my room? It's me, me, Nino. I'm in here. You want your ever on head, man? You can't go using my room. Sure I can, Daddy. -o. I'm taking over the Rebels, Johnny. And I got Terry in here with me. You what? Come in, Johnny. Nino, I never bugged you, baby. Now you mess yourself all up. I'm gonna have to kill you. Anybody want to say anything? Let him open his mouth right now. You really call him, Nino? Yeah. All right, Shirley, Sally, Marie. You three clean up the mess. Girls, it's never okay to reward your boyfriend with sex for killing someone. He'll just kill again. Back with more after this. Like so many low-budget quickies, Teenage Gang Devs is most valuable for reasons it never meant. Filmed on location in Brooklyn, the filmmakers caught little documentary glimpses of people and places that are now gone, or at least very different. The street scenes and locations give this movie a kind of accidental honesty. By the way, the motorcycle gang, the Rat Pack, is actually a real motorcycle gang called the RPM Club. Pay close attention to the conclusion because I want you all to learn the steps of the very groovy black belt. I'm going out for a while. Terry, can't you stay home just one night tonight? We just moved here, and you have school tomorrow, remember? Well, I'm restless. There's nothing to do around here. It's a drag. You could help with the dishes for once. Look, I'm going out for a while. they jump you. My guy splits one of their guys' faces. They're just getting even, that's all. You're new around here, ain't you? Sort of. I'm Terry. I'm with the Rebels. Oh, I heard of you. Your guy's Nino, right? Yeah. Thanks again for the help. See you around. What do you want to see him for? Well, I got to tell Nino and nobody else. Hey, listen, what you can tell Nino, you can tell me, too. What kind of person? Come on, what is it? We're going to resign from the club. We just came over to say goodbye. You what? We're quitting. I've been thinking. I'm going to be 17 tomorrow, and that's old enough to quit school. And I figured I'd better get out of the gang and get a job and make some bread. If he doesn't get a job, the army will take him for two years. And we want to get married, don't we, honey? Sure, baby. Where do you think you get off quitting us without permission, huh? We never needed permission before to check out. Well, you sure as hell do now. You gotta get my permission and Nino's. You don't get out so easy. Terry, if a guy wants to split, that's up to him. Nobody's gotta stay if they don't want to. Shut up. You gotta get my permission. That's the way it is. Oh, 
Okay, what gives? Piggy and Ellie want to quit the club. So? So. They want to quit so they can sing to the cops. They've got too much on us. Johnny. The rumble. Cool them. Can't do that. I know Piggy for years. He's a stoolie. You better take him out back and cut him up good. This way they'll know no one quits the rebels. And no one crosses Nino. I, I hear you and Ellie planning to split, huh, Piggy? Nino, we don't want any trouble. We just want to quit. It ain't nothing personal. We just want out. Well, maybe we better have a nice, quiet talk about that. Let's go out back and discuss it. I hear he's going to go to the cops, Piggy. That's crazy. Whoever told you that is a liar. Get out your knife, Piggy. I ain't carrying one. Somebody give him a blade. No. Pick it up, Piggy. Hawkeye Tony, wrap up Piggy and dump him in warrior turf. And that'll give us our excuse for getting him. Okay, you come with me. You're gonna scram now. And you're gonna keep your trap shut about Piggy. Because if you open up about what happened, I'll cut your guts out personally. Dig? Yeah, Neil. I won't say a word. Now, beat it. It's for you. It's one of your friends. Yeah? Terry, it's Shirley. Yeah? Can you come over to the club? Yeah, I guess so. What's up? It's Nino. He got hurt tonight. Nino? How? Yeah, he went over to Dragon Turf and they jumped him. Yeah, I'll be over right away. You're going out. Terry, it's late. Can't you stay in tonight? Look, it's important. I'll see you later. Here she comes. Where is he? Nino ain't hurt, Terry. What kind of crud is this? Let's just talk. Something to get you to come here. You see, we wanted you to meet some of your old friends. What the hell are they doing here? You don't belong in this clubhouse. Things ain't been so good since you came here, Terry. So we had a little meeting, and we decided we better stop you before there was any more killings. We're gonna fix it so that no man will ever look at you again. Don't kill her. We want her to remember what she's done. And keep away from me. Keep away from me. Keep away from me. Keep away from me. Another knee kick. Wow, that was a ball. I danced while Peggy was getting killed and while Terry was getting knifed. I'm sorry. I probably shouldn't have shared that with you. I'll be back with more of our guests and a drug that talks.
We're back with Russ Tamblin, who um, I most recently loved in Twin Peaks, but that's, oh. that's too recent. That's not <laughs> like B-movie B enough for us tonight. Um, so you made four pictures with Al Adamson, who was like the king of sleaze. It took four days. It took four days? <laughs> How did you meet Al? Uh, I got a call from him. Uh, he knew somebody that I knew, and when I was living up in Topanga, and I, uh, Topanga Canyon, I actually dropped out of movies and, and got involved in the fine arts. And uh, he called me up and asked me if I wanted to do a motorcycle movie, and I'd always been a huge fan of The Wild One. Uh, right. It was one of my favorite movies with Brando. And, yeah. And, uh, you know, to play the leader of a motorcycle gang, I just, I couldn't turn it down. You and, couldn't resist it. And that got me started. Uh, that got me started in the, and the ended bug. my career. <laughs> yeah, in fine arts. Yeah, it ended that's that right. career, thank God. Because we wouldn't have seen you in all the great things we've seen you in. <laughs> but we are so glad you were with us tonight. Oh, it was my pleasure. You're a wonderful actor, and we look forward to seeing you in all the B-movies to come. <laughs> oh, could, thank you. If we could open the right, just what you want to hear. If we could just, like, get back into that frame of mind again, that innocence and that sense of fun. But yeah, I think we can do right. it, Russ. Well, we'll give it our best shot. I'm sure going to go after it. I love it. <laughs> Russ Tamblin, thank you Thanks, for coming, Andrew. honey. Have you ever sat around the house on a Saturday night and pondered the question, what does the voice of LSD sound like? If you have, get ready for a breakthrough in your therapy sessions. Because our next clip, LSD 25, answers that burning question. Seems that Mr. LSD is worried about his public image and wants to set the record straight. His message, today you're just high, tomorrow you're dead. Listen closely to his voice. Is it me? Or does Mr. LSD sound a lot like William Shatner? We don't know. Could just be that Mr. LSD is a Trekkie. Right now, some 200 micrograms of my substance have just entered his body. And already my potent molecules are on their way to his brain where they will trigger some very special chemistry. And in just a few minutes now, I will show him glimpses of distorted beauty or tumble him into a terrifying private hell. But at just this moment, neither he nor I know the direction or destination of the trip we're about to take together. Round, round, out of your mind. You think you're seeing things, I know you're blind. A million bright colors explode in your head. Today you're just high. They're damaged for life. I've read some silly things about kids falling out of trees and painting themselves green and yellow, and uh, it's rather stupid to me. No good. They're taking it in sugar cubes, and it's being dropped into their punch. Well, truthfully, my friend, I know nothing about it. Only what I've read in the paper, what I see on television, and that's about all. We've got to do something about this, don't you think so? But I don't know. I don't know what these things are. I've become a favorite topic of conversation almost everywhere. And the mere mention of my three-letter name is enough to send certain writers running to turn out sure-selling articles on how horrible I am. As publishers know, I'm good copy. And since there's some information and misinformation about me, it's easy to keep the LSD pot boiling. <laughs> Bad for my image, as the advertising people say. Sensational, sure, fire in the paperbacks, but so much of it lacks the saving virtue of truth. There hasn't been a case reported yet where I poisoned anyone. But speaking frankly, a lot of my most ardent supporters are bad for my image, too. Like these three clowns from Southern California who are planning the beginning of something they call Acid City. So that's the scene. Folks like these who love me and think I belong in everyone's breakfast cereal. And way over in the other direction, the Fright Boys with their sure sell magazines and comic books. Things being what they are, you really can't blame me for wanting to put the record straight. It is, as they say, Time for the facts. High time.
I'm the world's original instant relief drug. Drop a cap of me, man, and drop out. But watch it, because the trip can be a trap, too. You never know where a ticket with me will take you. Where are you? Oh, stop that, man. Where stop are that. you, man? Stop You're that. Not here, man. Let me give you an idea, just the barest idea of what a bum trip can be like. Voices, courtesy of those who've been there. Utterly fantastic, utterly terrifying, utterly powerful, and utterly unpredictable. I've even been known to carry a passenger inside the pulsing redness of his own beating heart and leave him there. Portrait of a traveler about to take a trip. And his trip is just now starting. He's stuck with me now in what we may do together for the next few hours. I'm not vicious by nature. But I'm not harmless either. You have to take your chances. But curiously enough, the kind of trip he'll take won't depend upon my chemistry as much as his. Because, you see, it's my real secret that I strip away the layers and layers of ego, the protective security blanket that shelters you all. And I can bring him into the incredible world of his own deep brain dreamscape. Of course, when he actually gets there, he may be terrified by what he sees. But that's his problem, not mine. Next up, my favorite part of the show, trailers. Real Wild Cinema offers you tonight's outrageous feature, Teenage Gang Debs, uncut, uncensored, and unbelievable at the low price of $19.95. Be the envy of your friends with the Teenage Gang Debs t-shirt for $15 or the Real Wild Cinema t-shirt for $15. Official Real Wild Cinema membership, newsletter, and complete video catalog for only $5 or free with order of t-shirt or video. Call 1-800-571-4763 to order now. Wow, life in the 50s must have been sort of cool. Wild reefer parties, antisocial behavior, violence, hairspray. My life seems so boring compared to these kids. Except, of course, for those wild nights when I put on my silk pajamas, grab some freshly squeezed orange juice, and proceed to beat the dust out of my living room couch. Take a look at some of these trailers. <laughs> Well, I gotta run. There's a rumble later and I have to allow enough time to get my hair ratted. But don't you worry. I'll be back next week with some more exploitation films from the 50s and 60s and more about the dark side of me. The Debs are outside and you don't want to keep them waiting. 
Until next week, I'm Sandra Bernhard, and this is Real Wild Cinema. Good midnight to you.